Okay, to get started in Xcode with our project, I'm going to choose the utility application template uh, because it has a main view and it flips over to a second screen. And our app is just going to be two screens, so this will do a lot of the setup for us. So I'm going to click Next, and I'm just going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it BP App. I'm going to use Storyboards. I'm not going to use Core Data. I am going to have automatic reference counting turned on and include unit tests unchecked. And to keep this simple, I'm just going to keep it as an iPhone style app. We'll click Next, choose a location for it, and click Create. So let's just run this and see what we get out of the box with our template. So we have our main view, and it flips to the other side, and then done flips us back. So we've got a good structure already set up for us. And the way our layout is, we have a main view controller, header file, and implementation file. And that is for this main screen. And then what we want to code for the other side, for our flip side, we use the flip side view controller, header, and implementation file. And we're using storyboards for this, so we'll be using that for laying out our user interface. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start right in the storyboard and work with the main view controller. And we'll start by setting up the layout. So I'm going to add in some text fields. And I'm going to have one for the systolic and one for diastolic, and then comments, and then my buttons. So I'm going to pause this and put these on so that we can save a little time. So I'm just going to pause this and set up my user interface. Okay, so I have my interface set up, and for these text fields, I am going to add some placeholder text rather than placing a label in here so that it can keep the user interface a little cleaner looking and we'll put in comments in here okay and now uh, we have this button that's already set up down here that flips the screen over to the other side but I want that to be up here and to be a little more obvious about what it's going to do to go to the other screen this is already connected to the method that takes care of the flip, right? If I look at the connections inspector for that button, we can see that it's set to the flip side view controller action. And that flip side view controller action is already defined in our implementation file and header file. So it flips us over to the other side and back. So this is the prepare for segue, and then the flip brings us back. So all I want to do is change the style of this button to something that's not this info screen, this info button. So I'm going to go back to the properties and change the type back to a round rectangle button. And we'll put a title on here. Let's just say uh, view history or show history. And I'm just going to resize this out so that it's the same size as my save button and bring it up. And I'm just going to select all these and move everything up so I don't have to worry about uh, retracting the keyboard for right now. Okay, so let me view this in the simulator and just see what this looks like and make sure my show history button still works. Okay, so here's our show history. Okay, so the interface is set up and the navigation is still working. So, next thing we need to do is create and set up outlets for our text fields and also um, a function that's going to save this information to our database once we have that set up. So I'm going to switch over, let's take off this panel and go to the assistant editor. We'll start making outlet connection. So I'm just going to right click and drag from systolic over into my header file, my, my main view controller header file, and make sure that's what displays there. And I'm just going to call this systolic text, and I'll do this for diastolic text, and then comments.
And then my save button, I'm going to, rather than using an outlet, I'm going to make this an action. And we'll say, we'll call this save entry and connect. Okay, so with that, now I can go in here and if I look in my view, main view controller implementation file, we can see that it did add a stub here for our save entry so that when that button is clicked, we'll be able to collect that data and then save it into our database. But before we do that, we have some other things that we have to do. So we need to prepare and set up our MySQL database. So in order to do that, I'm going to go out of the assistant editor and into the main view controller implementation file. So we have more room here on our screen. Now in order to use an SQLite database, we need to use that framework. So I'm going to go up to my project folder or my project icon up here. And on our summary tab, I'm going to scroll down and we can see a list of the different frameworks and libraries. So in order to use the SQL Lite, we need to get the SQL Lite 3 library. So I'm going to click the plus sign and we're going to scroll down in this list. We want the lib SQL Lite 3 library. So we'll choose that and click add and you can see that it gets added to our framework. And so now I'm going to go back to the main view controller header file we have additional things that need to be set up in here in order to be able to work with our database. So to begin with, we also need to tell it here to import in that SQLite library. So we say SQLite3.h file. And in our interface, we also have to tell it we're going to create an SQLite3 database object. And I'm just going to call that DB for short, for database. And now I'm just going to add in some other things in here. We are going to use the date for our primary key. So I'm going to set up a property for an NS date that will be our current date. And I'm going to paste in some other information of things that we're going to need in our database. So a couple of methods and a string. So I'm just going to paste this in and review what that will help us with. So we're going to have a string for our file path and our file path is going to represent the location of where the database is actually going to be stored with the project files. So we need a string that's going to represent that. We're also going to create a method that's going to open up our database and we're also going to have a method that we're going to use to create our table in the database. So one way of working with it is you can create it as your application initializes or starts. Another option would be to create your SQL database and package it with your application, but that would be the subject of a different tutorial. Okay, then we're going to have a method called OpenDB, which we're going to write to find our database in the file path and if it's not there to create the database. And we also have a method here called create table that's going to create the table within the database if, again, it doesn't already exist. So we have these defined here and now we need to implement them in the main view controller implementation file. So I'm going to switch over to that. Okay, now I'm going to start by uh, pasting in some code which we'll be using to get the file path to where the database would be located in our file structure. So to just save some time, I'm going to paste this code in and then we'll review it. So in essence, we're creating a string called file path and what it will do is it's going to create a list of all the paths possible for your search path for directories and domains, meaning where the files are located for your particular app. So if I open up the panel over to the side here and we get our quick help list. So for our application, we have a sandbox where our files are located and this will return a path for where that is. 
So we have a document directory, and within that directory, we have the NS user domain mask, which is our home directory. And we're going to return the paths, right? We're going to get a list of these paths. There's only going to be one path, so we have object at index zero, which means it's going to be the first and the only path for our application. And we're going to string by appending path component. So on the end of this path, we're going to attach the name of our SQL database. So this is the database that we're going to create. This could also be the path for a database that you've already created in uh, SQLite and packaged it into where your files are. So in either case, this is going to find the path to the location of the files, and it's going to add in the name of the SQL file that we're going to be using. So now when we refer to file path in our application, it's going to include the location of where the files are, including the name of the SQL file. Okay, and next I'm going to add in our open db method. I'm going to paste this in again just to save some typing time. And our method is to open the database. And we're going to say if sqlite3 open, this is a command that's part of the SQLite 3 library. That's to open a database. And so where is our database? Our database is in this file path. And we have to convert it to a C string. So we use UTF-8 string. So this UTF-8 string converts this into a C style string, which is what SQLite 3 library uses. And we have a pointer to our database. And so this is all checking to see if it's not OK, right? It will return, if, or if it doesn't fail, it will return SQLite OK. So we're checking to see if it does fail. And if it does fail, then we're going to say SQLite 3, close the database. And then we have an assert and database failed to open. So we'll get a message. We can always add in here an else part if you want to see like a and a, a log statement that says else ns log database opened. And we need to have a way to get this to start when our application loads. So we'll come into the view did load and we'll call this method say self open db. So let's test this and see if we get our open our database opened message. So I'm going to run this in the simulator. And we have an incomplete implementation. So let's go back and look at that. But in the meantime, this loads and we do get our database opened. So at this point, it does connect to the database and open it. Now the implementation, incomplete implementation here. And so this incomplete implementation is probably because I have this method, but I haven't carried that over into my implementation file. So since I'm going to need that anyway, let me bring that in, paste it in, and let me try building it again and see. Yep, that took care of the incomplete implementation issue. Okay, so that I'm going to complete with this tutorial. So we have it set up to be able to find the file path where our SQL database is and open a database. And if it's not there already, then SQLite will create this database. So right now we're able to open and create an SQLite database and find it in our file path. Uh, upcoming video will demonstrate how to create a table and then add content to that table.